In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. This whole week we've been reflecting on that little pamphlet written by Father Paul Sullivan, O.P., a Dominican preacher from 1936, Read Me or Rue It. We've been reflecting on uh, purgatory. That's what the book is about. And today we have a very special guest here for the first time this week, uh, our young students here. So perhaps this may be able to help you to pray for the poor souls in purgatory. Uh, after reflecting on the holy souls in purgatory and the tortures that they experience, uh, we would definitely think twice before committing any mortal sin for the rest of our lives. The question today would be, why are the pains of purgatory so severe and so painful? There are five points of reasoning, five bullet points in using logic. The first one, the fire we have on earth is made by the goodness of God. So the fire that we see physically on this earth is used for cooking, warming up your bath water, uh, all kinds of things in order for us to help us in all of our needs, cooking and all the rest of it. So the purpose of the physical fire that we see is through God's goodness. He made it for goodness, out of his goodness. While... Fires could be abused and used by accident or by some torture to us can cause us great pain. But although the original intent is to comfort us, to serve our needs. While, to the second point, while the purgatory fires has a totally different source of being, It was not just created by God's goodness, but rather it was created by his justice. So the fires of purgatory have a totally different meaning than the physical fires that we see on this earth. And so therefore the fires made by God's justice is solely and 100% there to punish us and to purify us from sin. And so therefore, if earthly fire made by God's goodness tortures anyone by accident or by affliction by another man, then purgatory's fire made by God's justice must hurt even more because of the very source, the reason why it has been created Third point, earthly fire only burns our bodies made of clay. So it's very quick. Or to burn an item, the intensity of the fire, the the crispy flames, and it's over within a couple of minutes. But purgatory's fires, even though it has that intensity, But it does not cease so quickly. It consumes in almost a perpetual manner the spiritual souls that find themselves there. Which is unspeakably more sensitive to pain than our souls and our bodies would be to the physical fires on the earth. So it's much more susceptible to this. Number four, earthly fire is more intense. The more intense the earthly fire is, the faster it burns to destroy the item. Whereas purgatory's fire, ever so intense, inflicts violent pain. But there's no quick destruction as earth's fire. Rather, as fire burns the soul, it doesn't destroy it or kill it nor does it lessen the soul's 
sensibility. So it's another way of saying point number three. And finally, point number five. As severe as purgatory's fire is, so we can meditate on that for a long time, how painful the fire is of purgatory for those saved souls. Yet, the pain of a temporal loss is even more severe. The separation from God for a time. But the only hope that the souls in purgatory have is that they're going to un unite with God. It's going to come to an end sometime in the future. That's the only hope and source of consolation they have. Otherwise, this pain of loss, temporary be it, is an absolute torture. It's even more than the fires themselves burning upon the soul to have lost God. Could you imagine losing your body and you sink into the depths of the earth and there's like a sense of loss and a sense of fear, insecurity maximum because God is not around. This complete darkness and no presence whatsoever of that saving presence of God. So therefore it's been forlorn. And that punishment, which is an unsatisfied craving, tortures the soul. So therefore let us continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass as the priests will hoist up our Lord on the gibbet of the cross in an unbloody fashion. As our Lord be on Calvary, let us beg him to console those that are most in need at this moment in purgatory, those who have been there for about 700 years and no one has been praying for them because all their family is all blotted out. No one has memory of them and yet they're still burning away in purgatory, begging us for mercy that we may pray for them. And may the good Lord as he's hoisted up on his gibbet of the cross, saying, I thirst. May he give up his drink and pour it upon some poor soul during our time of communion, that lost, forgotten soul and purgatory. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.